next thing we're going to do is a couple of hours of impossible situation. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well go home. <laughs> 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 yeah. Let that happen to you. Oh, yeah. um, what I want to pay a lot of attention to on these things that we're going to do here um, would be what the attacker is doing. Again, in the intelligence or the thought process of the attacker and where they plan for the attack to go next. So you have to kind of play along with this. You're going to have to imitate these different roles. Uh, some of the situations that I'm going to set up really are be pretty depressing or demoralizing to be in. Right? We're just going to start where you've already, maybe you tried to hit this person and they didn't go down. Or you tried to sweep them or throw them and next thing you know you're going down and here they are over top of you you know, hitting you or this type of a thing where rather than take the time to go through all of that stuff so you can see how and why you would end up in that position, if you can just kind of go along with me, we'll get in that position and just start it from there. But if at any time during this seminar something doesn't make sense, I mean, why would the, what's going on? Why would you be in that position or why would the attacker be doing that or you have any doubts? that you know, this might not happen this way in the fight or whatever. Be sure and ask those, come up to where I am or, or whatever. Because if you don't, again, if you don't see the value, if you don't see that this is a legitimate threat, it's not that uh, important for you to practice against it. So make sure that we understand it. Also, uh, on this, there's plenty of room for your input. Maybe some kind of a variation off of something we're doing, a situation that, that uh, you'd like to see or um, you'd like to just try out or whatever. So by all means, uh, let's look at that as well. And what I want to start with here is a pretty common street attack that I don't usually see enough attention given in martial arts schools. And this is just a plain crude grab and punch. We're going to use this kind of as a base to see how somebody might all of a sudden end up on the ground. So I want to practice this attack just a couple times so that you'll feel like and be able to deliver this disorienting attack against which we are going to defend later on. Follow that bizarre sentence there. So if Donald and I are, are working here, it's from this kind of a range where for me to start something with a person this size, this distance, and so forth, a lot of times the street intelligence is distracting first. So a handle come up with something like this, and then they come in and punch. Anybody ever seen anything like that happen? Okay, so there's one possibility. The other is the hand comes up here and pulls in and punches. Okay, anybody ever see something like that happen? Okay, it looks similar. This hand <coughs> did something, and then this was doing something, but the dynamics of what are happening inside of us as the defender are very different. Rather than me talk about it, let's just do them a couple of times. I'm going to have you not even defend against this. Because what I want you to do is feel that inside yourself so that you will then know what we've got going against us. Here's how to not do it. I'm here. You come up and grab my lapel. I do some kind of technique here. Someday you'll go down. <laughs> Anybody ever see something like that? Yeah. So what about a grab attack? And the guy comes up and goes like that. Well, what is this? Is this an attack here? No, no, they don't do that too often. They move you around. All of a sudden, I'm getting shoved into it from there where my balance is gone. I don't even see what's coming in. Well, this is the way the attack is going to happen, right? So here's what I want you to practice gently with each other. Right? I want you to feel, if you have a t-shirt on, I'll show you a, a, a variation on that. As I come up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit with the bottom part of my palm. This is a ninjutsu, by the way. This is street attacking, right? And we use the ninja taijutsu to defend against it. I'm going to hit to knock him off balance, and as he goes back, I just curl my fingers in to catch the jacket. All right, so from here, the jacket's caught, and there's that shaking action. Try to just, against a person who you're trying to surprise, try and just grab the jacket and shake him around. Find how hard that is. But again, it's so assumed, isn't it? So many times, the person comes up, does this, and they get ready, and then the punch comes. So let's do this. The hand hits first, Create this off balance and then curl your fingers in and then hand back again. You can do it gently so there's not actual whiplash that you're experiencing with that. 
when you hit this and they don't go back, and you feel this resistance, then immediately hook the fingers here. Not, you don't have to make a fist. You can just hook the fingers this way and pulling the person in. Don't follow with the punch at this point here, because you, you'll just naturally go into a defense. What I want to do is just let you experience this. We're only doing a couple of minutes. In fact, you won't even have to go in the other room. This is so close in here. All right, just so that you can feel it. Now, when I'm here, my training partner comes up and, and does that. What I want to do is just be aware of how I feel. Where does my attention go? All right, because I'm going to need to be aware of that when I start to do the defense. If he lightly grabs me and I'm looking at him and as his punch comes, I do something that's no point in practicing that if I'm not going to be attacked with that on the street. When he thumps me with the, with the butt of his hand and then his fingers catch in here, this way, where, I didn't even see the fist. What fist? Oh, the one that hit you before you were knocked out. <laughs> Don't want to have that experience. So let's just play around with it, again, lightly. So the deal is I hit first and then let the fingers catch and hit again if I need to. And I'm going to, ironically enough, be using my flexibility and lower stability here with that. You might want to practice it wrong, wrong. stiff leg. Oh, somebody took a picture of us. Oh. <laughs> okay. Be merciful where you put that. <laughs> Here's how it's right. Oh, somebody took a picture. <laughs> okay. Um, have fun with that. Now, the object is the one being grabbed and pushed. Just see where your awareness goes. Just see what, how you feel. Because what we want to do is use that. I'll give you a hint. It's kind of confused. If you like. Okay. Use that confused or disoriented feeling to make it work start in with headlocks and all the rest of the stuff. So just stand up, look for somebody maybe about your own height. Person comes up, starts shaking me around, and hits. Boom! There it is. Big old fist right down the center. So, again, that looks sort of familiar, right? <laughs> so, what I want you to do is be there and allow this person to surprise you. Now, you know it's coming, but allow yourself to feel surprised and move. Your body's moved. And then as the punch comes, see if you can use your disoriented state and your, your disequilibrium and your loss of balance to help you. Uh, one way it might look is this way, if you're attacking. I'm just falling. I fell. So as you grab and hit hard and fast, it works. There it is. So here's my first move. My first move from there. And what's he going to do in the fight if he missed? First one, he's going to hit again. Yeah. So we know that. So we're ready to go. So I'm going to fall a second or a third time. So if I'm here, yeah, I want to just keep falling and pulling back away using my body movement. Every time he goes to regain his balance and control, I want to use my body movement. Okay? So I'm disoriented, falling, and then moving away, moving away using this disoriented movement. Now what happens if we do it slowly, I've fallen in here. I know he's going to hit me again, so I just start running. And as he comes around with his hit, this running is what runs him into the stage there. So it's not a very pretty technique. Certainly nothing you didn't see in your favorite martial art movie, you know, martial art movie technique. <laughs> they do that. <laughs> This is different. Okay. He's got you here. You don't even know where it's going, let alone a kick. I fall in. And right away, I'm backing away because I come over this way here. Because Donald goes to tackle my leg or pull me on down, I just keep backing up, backing up from there. So your trick is keep your center low, allow yourself to fall, and be aware of where the next thread is coming from. Kind of crude looking. Let's do that. Now, what we're going to do next is have that fail. What if the guy catches up with you? And here you are, kind of down here, and they're catching up with you. But first, see how this might work as a natural response. Now, my suggestion, if this is new to you, do it kind of slow in the beginning. Keep the intensity. I'm the bad guy. So, yeah, you can see the intensity there, even though I'm moving slowly. OK, then speed it up. Donald's the bad guy here. I really have to fall in order for this to move. If I'm not falling, I'm, I'm making my muscles move my skeleton and it takes too long. So just fall. You're going to be falling anyway. Okay. So just, just fall. Oh, next hit comes in. 
just running to get away from it. The third hit comes in. Again, running to get away from that. Well, fourth one comes in. Oh, I quit running. This guy wants to fight me. I'm sharp. Catch on. Only got to burn me 12, 13 times. Okay, so everybody stand up. Let me, let's do a shadow boxing. What gets in the way in this is me trying to be stable when a guy's already got the jump on me into instability. Okay? Will's got me here, he's pushing me for me to try and be stable. I'm fighting my balance, I'm not fighting what is dangerous. Okay, so this is our this is our point. If I'm grabbing punched here, Jordan, I'm down here, he goes to hit me again. I'm unstable. I'll create my defense based on that instability. You fell down. Yeah. I was falling down anyway. <laughs> Figured my well I'd like my buddy along for the ride. Right? Turned, into, turned into a throw. Okay, so let's look at that here. I'm here. As he goes, I just get out of the way. I just drop into a position here, knowing that he's got a hold of me. Okay, super slow. This takes a lot of room, so you'll have to take turns doing it. So this far. Sit down. Get a half seiza this way. And if they got a hold of you, you sling them out. What if they let go? Well, that really was the point. <laughs> that really is the point. If they do let go, so I'm grabbed here. I collapsed. And at this point, oh, he lets go. Great. I'm all set. That's why I'm a half seiza. I can get low. I can kick back. I'm falling down anyway. That's the bad news. So let's make it the good news. But shouldn't you train to never fall down? Well, yeah, we should also invest always in the stocks that are going up. You always have good health. That's how it's work. <laughs> or I'm grabbed. Made up. As I drop on the first one, let's say you don't go down. You don't go down. You're too slick for me. OK, and you've let go. And you're not going to be around where I do this cool thing. You come over this way. I do that. So I still have some way of making this fight go my way, even though I'm in a very awkward position. Grab you. I throw. Well, we'll come back to that. But that's good. <laughs> that's what I want you to practice. But if the person does let go, you still have a lot of things that you can do. Now, ironically, and check your own experience on this. Ironically. Most of the time, the person doesn't let go. Right now, he's got a hold of me, and as he gets me here, I want to straighten his arm out. I'm going down anyway. I've lost my balance. Might as well use it instead of fighting and trying to jump back to the form. It's going to take a lot of room. Uh, some of you may or may not be comfortable hitting this at full speed, so uh, do what you need to do to be safe. Let's try this a couple times. Okay, I have to put this kind of stuff in a particular frame of reference. Um, otherwise, it can be confusing to your subconscious. And what I mean is, most of the time, probably, when you go into the martial arts school, your objective is to practice techniques perfectly, right? So that you are training your body how to respond perfectly, you are training your subconscious mind to believe, I can do this, I can win. Uh, so you're, you're having the emotional experience of seeing yourself win. That's what most katas are, I think. Sure, they include a lot of technical instruction, but I think the most important thing is you get to see yourself winning. I see myself winning over and over, and I come to believe in that. I come to believe in that. That's how the fighting spirit is taught to us through the techniques. So all of a sudden you go, and we're doing this stuff where I'm purposely having you do all of these things that usually contradict what we would think of as perfect form. Gee, you don't have time to get in your good kamae here, uh, you're bent over, uh, you're, you're doing all of these things that maybe normally you would be training to not do in the dojo. So sometimes that creates a dissonance, a, a, a conflict in your own mind. Okay, uh, gee, this... Uh, we're uncomfortable, so we try to go back to perfect movement. You know, we're trying to do this with this so-called perfect action. And we're, well, wouldn't it be better to do this? 
and stop him here, okay? And then for the throw, get your foot over here and throw him there. Yeah, it would be. I mean, that's that's the basic technique. That's not what was happening, was it? The guy got the jump on me. So for me to somehow hope to go back to Never Never Land, you know, where Tinkerbell lives and everything's pretty, uh, it's too late, it's too late. So we have to, we have to change our mind a little bit about our training and allow ourselves to see how as long as we are winning, that is perfect form. I don't know, you follow me on that? As long as we're winning, that is perfect form. Because I could do everything I just said, okay, and have it not work. I cut over here, oh, look at this. Yeah, here I am, he's, I don't control his balance. Well, you said fall on his arm, Stephen. And then you fell down, and I'm pulling, oh, man. Yeah. So that's not perfect, is it? It looks very different from what we did before. The principles have to be there. The principles have to be there. Okay, so anyway, if any of you are having trouble with not being in perfect martial art form as you're doing this, play with it. Have a little fun with it. Play with it. How much of your English that you speak when you're talking to your friends and lovers and everybody is exactly the way it appears in the book that they give the Japanese people or Spanish people when they come over here to learn English? Mine isn't. Good morning. How are you? I don't know when the last time I said that was, but it wasn't this morning. Good morning, how are you? It's a lovely day, isn't it? And are you feeling good? You know, I mean, classic stuff in a How to Speak English book, you know, and then you go out into America and they go, hey, or oh, or whatever. <laughs> you can always tell the foreign people, right? Because they speak perfect English. Good morning, how are you? Oh, this isn't a native, because he'd be saying, hey, how you doing? Or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, same with the martial arts. Same with the martial arts. You can tell the beginners. <laughs> Bad guy attacks me. <laughs> oh, but he's got a heavy coat on, and then he just attacks me. <laughs> well, we're having a little fun at our own expense on there. Of course, there's proper form. And there's a time when you can play around with it to get the lessons behind it. Here's what could happen next. Okay. Uh, we're here. Boom. Okay, he comes in, so I'm falling away with that. I'm trying to run behind him, and he's already punching, so I've dropped, and he's coming down. He's falling on top of me this way. Falling on top of me this way here. Uh oh. I don't have any place to go. Did you see what he did? Took a couple little steps when I did the throw. Why? My timing was off. Well, why don't you train so your timing isn't on? <laughs> well, great. In another lifetime, when I come back as the king or whatever, I'll be able to do it. Meanwhile, it happens. It happens sometimes. Slipped on a little something out in the cow pasture or whatever it was. It happens sometimes. So I'm here. I'm attacked. He's hitting me. I'm down in here. I go to throw it. Ah, he runs in. So what I have to do is be able to use what momentum is going on from there. He continues to fight from here. I know where the target is. <laughs> target is now. My leg. Okay. So here's what happens. Good news. Oh, bad news. <laughs> Good news. Uh oh, bad news. He just comes running right up on me. And he's going to hit me from behind. Back up. Just backing up as he hits down. Now. If I back up when he's not hitting down, he doesn't have forward momentum, he can back up with me. We're gonna look at that in a minute. But for right now, let's say, super slow motion. Oh, here he is there, as he goes to hit, I'm backing up. And then from here, all I did was come flying after him to wedge his uh, jaw in. With us and do whatever I would need to for this point here. Getting some kind of a lock up here, or whatever, to follow up with that. I've gone down, Ooh, and just doing this, backing up as they punch you. As they punch you. Their momentum is what throws them. Now, you might be a Golden Glove boxer. Not used to going head first onto the floor. So be careful with yourself on this, okay? Because as you can see, from here, what I'm doing is just backing up here. I'm going to hit his legs. So as he comes to punch me from there, 
his legs all of a sudden aren't there for the support. So the head, your head's going to go straight down if they're punching. So that's your head's going straight down. So be very careful. Make sure that you collapse and do it slow enough that you can roll out. Okay. What about if they just fall straight on top of you? That means they weren't punching you. Right? They weren't punching you and you need another technique. We'll, we'll look at that one next. Right now, here they are. Over you, they're punching this way. All of a sudden you go back. That's what pulls them down. Okay, carefully uh, get with a training partner. See if you can set that up. Of course, of course, there are fundamental techniques, basics that we start with, you know, early on in the training. This is some pretty wild stuff that we're dealing with. But it's fun to look at. It's fun to look at where we're going. And some of the uh, spiritual traditions of Asia, uh, India, Tibet, and, uh, Japan, used to be in China, uh, not so much now. And some of these esoteric systems, they have uh, a quality of knowing that we've nicknamed in English crazy wisdom. Crazy wisdom, and that sounds funny, crazy wisdom. What crazy wisdom indicates is that a person is so familiar with the nuts and bolts of how something works, we become so expert on the details of how it works, that we sort of transcend the nuts and bolts of how it works. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Uh, really expert. I actually saw this happen one time. Uh, we had this electric business machine in an office, and a person came in from the home office to fix this thing, and he's looking around, and he watched this stuff, and I, it sounds like a joke, but it's true. This is a thousands of dollars machine, you know, with all these chips in there and its own brain, more intelligent than half our staff, you know. It was in there, and I'm not kidding, the guy, in order to get this thing to work, ran over and gave it a palm heel right here underneath the thing, and you heard this little whoosh, 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 and then all of a sudden it's working. An electronic thing, and he knew where to hit. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't explain why, but this is like the crazy wisdom, okay? You'd think it would have been in a chip somewhere. No, it's that crude. That you, you just knew what it was, and you knew if he hit it this way, it would break some kind of a little jam up in the memory or whatever, and uh, that's the only way this guy could fix it. It's sort of crazy. So what happens is we, in our martial art school, train proper basics, okay? I want to keep the good targets back away, all right? So I know how to do that. And I want to keep the thorny things that would be hard for this person to come through out there. All right, so we learn and practice the basics. So we don't do this in the fight. No, no, that's a backwards. We don't do this in the fight. No, no, we've got basics. But eventually, studying the basics enough, you get down to the point of it all, and sometimes you even can break the rules. It looks like you're breaking the rules of the nuts and bolts in order to have this happen, in order to have this so-called crazy wisdom. And it made sense, it wouldn't be crazy wisdom, would it? Okay, so uh, anyway, there it is. That's where we're going for with this kind of stuff here. So bear with me. If none of this made sense at all, just consider it a little break. You got your wind back and ready to go for the next phase here. Okay, let's look at how this could degenerate even further. Oh, Brandon, we're working here. So now uh, we'll start out where he's got me uh, unbalanced. I've fallen in here. As he goes, I'm down this way. I try to back up, and at this point, he just gets more stable. You see what he did? He just sort of backed away from me. Got more stable now. Uh, I'm going to reset this up. <laughs> Yeah, you're a benefit here. Okay, just lunging over here. That's the line. So from here, I'm off balance. I collapse. I've got here. I've tried that little neat trick here. He just gets more stable. At this point, when he does that, and I know he's not going forward, I'm, I, I don't have to see it, but I know it's on its way to my, the back of my head. So I want to get down here real fast where I can be in charge. Of the situation. Now we give him a free yoga lesson. <laughs> okay, so from here, we'll just cut to the chase. Here I was, Spots threw me down here, I go and bang him, and he just goes wide on me, backs up with that. I know where he's going to be punching without seeing it. So I get down here as I'm coming over. I'm hitting with both feet. Use this foot to hold him down, this next one to come flying up with a hip still struggling, I go out to both knees. I just got all my weight to push against his hips. Just to pop those joints out. <laughs> 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 
Like the lumpy is really. <laughs> All right, so everybody, we're here. I try to back up, he backs up too. So we just get away from where, where this fist is. And this is a kick. Boom, and you're really going over with this. We're doing it gently in here. The other thing that could happen, let's acknowledge that, as I flip over here, he starts to punch straight down. In which case, that's why I'm doing this circular kick here. Might even, as you're doing, look something like this. Here I am, as I go over, he's punching straight down. Where I'm gonna have to hit that. Fast. If he's really hitting fast, it may engage that fist as well. He's coming straight down at me. Okay. One more time, we'll let you do this. So as I back up, he backs up and goes wide. Wham! I'm oh, going to come across. Take him down. Pull him back into my head as I come up here. Scramble on out of there. And then when the police come, they're asking the witnesses what they saw. Oh no, it's some guy in black suit with a beard, clumsy guy. <laughs> <laughs> he fell down a couple times and old Brent here, you know, who's normally one that beats them all up here, he come up all bloody. I don't know what happened. <laughs> what happened to the clumsy guy? I don't know, he sort of fell on out of here and we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a training partner, comfortable area, counter it by going wide and backing up to see how you can use this rolling kick. Okay, let's take this on a little bit further to where now they end up catching you, turning into a strangulation or a, or a back break type of uh, strangulation technique here. Um, we'll show you this in a second. Has anybody here ever studied this Gracie Jiu-Jitsu? Do you know that at all? You have studied a little bit? Have you seen the video of this Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, anybody? Yeah, wow, boy. I saw this video a friend showed me of these matches in Brazil and all over the place and what real rough and tumble guys and uh, what a lot of times I saw happening in this video was uh, they'd somehow get a person dumped on the ground, come up behind them, come in from the front with this strangulation while pushing down on the back and immediately you know the person is slapping the mat to say great you've won and uh, let me out of here type of a thing because you've ever had that done to you back is arched this way so you feel the bones are going to be damaged and the uh, the windpipe is being crushed from the front you know there's a, a frantic sense that comes into uh, into the body anyway I've seen this on these videos if you haven't seen this Gracie uh, not that you're going to study the their art but it's it's an interesting video to see it's not a whole lot of theory right? <laughs> not much philosophy talked about in this video I mean it's just Wham, slam technique. Anyway, it was interesting, but I saw that this that people ended up in this choke so often. That, well, this is very interesting because it's real, it really happens, and uh, it really creates a sense of helplessness in the victim who's, who's caught that way. And I can understand how effective this Gracie Brothers technique would be the way they were using it there. So let's use as a model that kind of uh, choke. Now, you're gonna have to be careful with this because it, you're learning it. If your timing is a little bit off, um, we'll set a little space for you at the dinner tonight, okay? You know, a little bed of ice here, or whatever. It, it doesn't take much to be a little bit off. That's why it works so well. And wind is cut off, perhaps even these vertebrae dislocated, small of the back is gone. All right, so it's a very dangerous, thing that we're talking about and you're going to have somebody perhaps that you don't even know getting you in that hole okay you're going to willfully let them do that so you can practice the escape so again make friends with your training partner first in fact that's something i think that's interesting about this martial art that i've noticed a lot of these things are so preposterous right you do some training things where you start off in a hopeless situation and if you get a wise guy you know a training partner that isn't really in the spirit of what you're doing. That is learning how to do this stuff. So you get a wise guy who thinks on the first time around you should be a master of it and they know what you're gonna do anyway. So they get kind of cute and try to create a new attack in the middle. It'd be very dangerous. You really have to damage that individual in order for you to get out. 
so I've noticed in our clubs around the country, um, a friendship and a mutual respect develops pretty fast. Otherwise, I don't want to train with somebody that I don't trust, especially on this next technique. You'll see why. You've got to have some room to try it out so that you can, you can perfect it. Then you tell your friend, okay, now you can be a little rougher. Now you can be a little faster. And as you develop mastery, your confidence develops, your, uh, your skill develops, you'll be able to do this. So on this, again, my suggestion is to be very, very careful, very, very careful with each other as we, as we set this up. Um, I'm going to start just from the being on the ground with this choke. Again, it would be something, right, I'm to work together here. Again, it would be something like hits were coming in as I got punched uh, here, I moved over, and then this punch came in, and I'm down here, maybe hit me in the stomach, and I moved. Anyway, how we got here is up to you, but let's say I end up on the ground. Maybe I was out on the beach, you know, on a towel, and a guy came up and wanted to try that tape technique. Out. Anyway, there are a couple of, of things. I'm being pounded to where, in fact, we might even start with the technique we did before. Remember that one where I was trying to pull him down, he comes in, I drop, and he just pulls me back up. And what's this part? Okay, a little looser. I'm gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll have him clamp that on. So he's pulled me back up. As I resist, it's so easy to pop this on and then see how his hips are then gonna sink into my, don't do it yet, are gonna sink into my back to, to put that bend is he's going to pull up with his shoulders to do this. So if this doesn't work, I'm going to go home six inches taller. And uh, uh, So this is what we're going to practice. So we're here. As I started to do that last one, remember where we were going to drop up, I'm back up, and here it is this way. As he starts back in this way, immediately I go with that. Come in with a head butt. Okay, so we're here. I start down, pulls me up, and at this point, as he's starting to lower his hips, that's my lower my hips too. He's still got me, okay? In fact, the tighter he had, I can't, in a minute, I won't be talking, okay? So watch what I'm doing, because as he clamps in tight, that's what creates the headbutt in there, from there. Headbutt, do it again if I need to. Come out here, do it again if I need to. All right, so that's gonna be our first one. Second one we're going to do, I'm not going to show it to you yet. Second one, I'm not on my knees. Let's say he got me in a situation where now I'm being dragged. My legs are flat on the floor. He's got his hips here, okay, and choking up from here. Okay, I can't use my hip leverage, okay, see, this way. So we're going to do this one next. So don't try the defense we showed you against this because it, it won't work. Okay, so go back to what we're going to do. I'm um, here. I'm trying to drop. He pulls me back up. Pulls me back up. Okay, this way. And from there, I'm using his tight grip to do these headbutts. That's what gets him over in the first place. I'm here. I'm able to just put him into the stage. Okay. Now I'll get me very, I'll do a shadow wrestling. So you're here, you're starting to go down. All of a sudden, whoop, they'll pull you up this way. You'll feel that arm around there. And as they start to sink on your hips, break you forward this way as they pull back. Fall over and tuck your chin in. Head butt, you're just kicking up. And there, they've still, they still got you. Even though they're on their back, they'll, they've still got you. All right, so use your legs to just, here's the head bang it right up into their face that way. Now you want to pretend you're doing all this, okay, with your training partner. Now, instead of being on my knees, I'm down on my thighs. And he's wrestled me into the ground. And let's go up this way a little bit here. Now, he's uh, wrestling me to the ground. And as he pulls back on this and starts to tighten this down, some of you were putting the arm behind the neck for a brace, you know, this kind of a thing. That, that's fine too. But as this thing starts, don't wait for it to get on, but as it starts from here now, at that point, uh, go ahead and crank up. I'm coming back this way. So I'm pushing into. Now, if you go to clamp down on my throat. Yeah, clamp down. See, the problem is I've got his arm locked into the floor, so he can't pull his arm back to choke me out. That's why I'm talking. 
if I'm here, come up with me. I can't talk, okay? Because <laughs> his arm can move backwards. Can you see what's happening? As long as his arm moves backwards, it can shut my windpipe off. If I get my windpipe here, whereas he goes to shut it off, his arm can't move backwards, that's when I can talk here. Now I'm not really going to do this in the fight, but I'll be doing something else. But do you see that, that point? If I'm up here trying to somehow fumble around, and get knocked out. Okay, so I, it's, a, it's a possibility. I could buy a little time when that thing comes on there. If I can get here to where he can't pull his arm back any further, then I'm doing things from there. Yeah. His free hand comes back to help out his captured hand. Great. I was hoping you'd do that. <laughs> That's weird. Just weird. Yeah. Let him. <laughs> 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 cool. He flips out. Okay. Now with this one too, again, get a sympathetic training partner. Practice it a little bit. I mean, it's the same with speed techniques. Maybe you're a wrestler, a judo champion, you know, and all of a sudden you're going to practice some things against speed kicks or whatever. You know, you'll want to have this kick to move a little slower at you first. Okay, so here's the technique by myself. Okay, like this. When you feel that starting to go up, just it's like you're becoming a, a spear or a pencil. Get as skinny as you can to roll over this way and shove in that arm into the ground with your neck for that moment then start hitting or headbutting from there all right so that you can, you can get have to get real skinny what we did before from the knees here what you wanted to do is go wide remember that's what made him fall over you went kind of wide and knock him off here you got to go skinny so you kind of slip over this way in their grip so it's a little different uh, physical principle working for that ready to try this okay uh, so the attack, I don't know, you saw what Brent was doing, right? So you'll be able to recreate this attack with each other. You know, we'll right down on. Did you have your knee up? Go ahead. Uh, this thing is loud. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, I get it. So then I can't push this. Oh, very clever. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> Sneakier than I thought. All right. Okay. <coughs> sitting on top of me like this. Yeah. Um, Mom's got a little bit more presence in the world than I do. <laughs> Weight-wise. So at this point, for me to try to somehow force him off of me isn't going to work here. Now, let me move your arm a little bit. Why, why would he be doing this to me? You think so cute? <laughs> maybe. 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 He uh, wants to humiliate me, possibly. Possibly he's going to hold me down and everybody ridicules me or whatever. Holding me down until somebody else comes along to do the finishing off. I mean, for whatever reason, he's not, he's not damaging me right now, right? He's just holding me here. He's like a wiggle and trying to get out of there and nothing's happening. He's just a big guy who's holding me down, okay? So, where's the danger? Where's the danger here? Not any, is it really? There really isn't a danger yet. Now, his buddies are coming over to kick me from the top of the head. They're going to arrive. That'll be dangerous. Well, right now, there is no danger. Can you see how this is different from him holding me here and pounding down with his fist? Where, yeah, where is the danger? <laughs> <laughs> so we got to treat these different. So let's do this one here. Here I am. I'm being held down. So, you know, this way here. Again, I'm going to give him what he expects. I'm going to wiggle around. This is not going to work. Go up with my head here. Get in here, just like he expects. <laughs> he sort of laughs. Yeah, and what's a counter to this kind of stuff? Yeah. Now my legs are like a frog here. I'm going to do all of that, as goofy as it looks, but it'll only take a second. And as he goes back to make those, those legs not work, that's what gives me the freedom to move my arms out of the way. From here, I start generic, helpless, wriggling movement. If he expects, he expects me to do this, maybe yell at him, whatever. I start banging here. That's not going to hurt him. He may just sit there and laugh. But look at the rhythm I'm getting in the body. Even as he laughs, at that point, I make my move. Go skinny. It's like a, like a pencil. Flip over. This is hard to do by myself, right? Shadow box. But I'm here. I start some momentum here. And at that point, I'll feel it. I'll feel it. 
at a certain point where P is waiting to feel this, or however you explain it, at that point, what I'm doing is going skinny this way. I'm not trying to make his arms come off the ground this way or push him up there. It's like this. You see what I'm doing here? Real skinny. Do it one more time and let's do this one. Now this time he really is. He's holding that. He's got all his weight on there. So he's not up on a knee or anything. I bounce, wiggle, get skinny. And then now I'm using my hip bones on the inside of his knee. Coming up from there. From here, what I do is oh, I'm trying to hand and break that wrist if I need to. <laughs> what? You know, what hits me with a, with a good wrist? Oh, okay, great. I grab that one and then can come over here. His boot hits him. <laughs> <laughs> His boot has the prints on it. <laughs> okay, now again, with this, work with each other. Well, you know the answer, you know, certainly you've already seen the secret. Okay, so again, holding each other down. Heavy. You're sitting here heavy. Hands are down here heavy. We're going to do the, this in a moment. But for right now, holding them down heavy. Boom, they go up, and as they settle back down, that's when you make your move. Let's get a move this way here. It's going to take up a lot of room. You may want to do that out on the grass. It's going to look like what we started out with today, but there's a difference. We're going to grab here, and now instead of pushing, we're pulling in. We're going to come into this hip this way. Yeah. And that's the basically the response. When I'm grabbing, push off that, then I'm pulled in. Yeah, I'm going to cut over to the side and hit that hand away. Okay. So from here, I'm grabbing, hit that hand. Then I'm going to do this wrist twist. Now this is where we sort of depart from reality sometimes. This is a big guy, you know. He's strong, and if he doesn't want to get in that wrist twist, what does he have to do to counter this? Just stand count. back up. Yeah, stand up. Oh, you're done. I was hoping this would happen. And then he laughs. That's pretty real. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know why that kung fu there, buddy. <laughs> so just for fun, let's practice. He's got me. As he goes, I hit him in the joint here. And then as I start to hit to the head, I realize I'm not going to hit him hard enough because he's big enough. Just twist this around to where we're going to start in with this twist. Do any? Do you know this? Can you do this? I mean, this isn't so advanced, you can't do it, is it? No. Because what I want to do is show this escape <coughs> and how we can make this work. Hand is here, as I'm being slightly pulled in, and he punches. This time, instead of falling in this way, I'm going to fall out the other way. Punch him in the shoulder or forearm. I start to punch the face, the ball, that's a pretty big head. Maybe I'll, I'll get the worst of that deal. Uh, he's laughing at me. Hold on. So I'm going to just peel his hand off this way. It's a standard. Aikido has this, Jiu-Jitsu has this, Taijutsu, you know this, right? And at this point, hand just muscles you. Back in, right? So let's just do that much. Then we're going to show you a couple tricks that would, why this technique from this particular kata will work if you can do a few tricks or special application things on it. Won't need a lot of room, so get a training partner. Let's do it. Okay, now let's look at a couple of application situations. Number one, this technique is in so many martial arts, old ones, like Nippo Taijutsu that go back to the 1100s, uh, contemporary ones like Yeshiva's Aikido, they're in and, and all the rest in between. They're in there, I mean, you've seen these, right? So they must have a value. And yet how many of you, when you think about it, have seen how easy it might be for a person to pull out of there? Yeah, okay, well, now we've got the mechanics of how to do it. There's the application. So now somewhere between application and staging is what we're going to do a couple things to encourage this to work so that you can see uh, how this uh, how this fits in to the whole uh, fight as opposed to Don and I working here. And now with this whole body. Let's look at that slowly from here. My damage in there. As I start up with this, I run over here and punch him at the same time. Get this jammed up in there from that punch. That just gives him pushes him back a little bit. He starts to come and get me at this point. So when I go down at that point, he's already advancing on me. That's why the technique works. Okay, now from this point here, shoulder's in a position. All I have to do is do a lurch forward and dislocate. Let's look at it again from the other angle. 
forgiveness. And here, he resists, of course, because he's stronger. Uh -huh. I know that. But just look at him. So I'm hitting him there. As he resists, I'm going to pull out. Pull out on that. So I, I'm using his resistance. Using his resistance. Super slow. Punching in there. Hitting and he now he resists to where, uh oh, so I'm going to run into him with my body here as a variation. I don't know if I'd want his hand that close to my groin if I were you. Can't do anything. Fingers go the other way. <laughs> fingers, fingers go the other way. And so now all I can use is just my body to break this. Okay, so if you see, how did we cheat? We hit him as we came around. We use his resistance by repositioning our body. So by resisting, it actually put the lock on. And then we used our movement instead of our arms, body movement instead of our arms, to make this be a value. That's why this technique is so prevalent in so many martial arts. It's been around. Application, staging. Super slow motion again. I get out of the way of the punch, by the way, as it comes in uh, real fast. I'm out of the way, and then I hit anything in there, as that happens. I'm hitting there. As I come around, I've already hit in there, and this point here, pull out, and start in. This way. Fall down to dislocate all of this stuff. Use my legs if I need to. He's not got me twice, he's struggling to get out of there. <laughs> use my leg. He's stronger than I am. Bigger than I am, so as he struggles to get out. Cute, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it works. It's still working. Okay, get a, if you can't get a training partner, as you apply this twist, turn it into a punch right up in here. Right up in here, pull back on it, and straighten them out with this hand up this way and see if it works now.